Heavenly Father, we praise you for this week. It's been an amazing week, Father. Many prayers have been answered, and we thank you. And we ask you be with us, Lord, as we move into this tricky time, Father. But it's not for those who follow you and are about your business. There is no wondering. There is no foolery. It is only glory given to you. Be with us as we study that your Holy Spirit may be here. And, Father, that your people awaken to our duties and tasks that you have set before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going back to uh, 1 Chronicles 16, and arguably, I don't in my mind, it's not even arguably, David was probably the greatest earthly ruler, not probably, was the great. I'm going to make the statement, my opinion, the greatest earthly ruler that God ever had on this country, uh, uh, on this planet. And why do I say that? Simply because the amount of success that Israel had accomplished and seen under David's rule has never been duplicated. The amount of years of peace and prosperity that Israel had, the amount of years that the sanctuary service, which in essence is preaching the gospel, had gone forward without any interruptions and impurity. Did David have issues? Yes. There's not, I don't think, in my opinion, well, I, again, there's anybody in the Bible that served God that there's more sin recorded against than David. You name it, he did it. But he always knew where the blame lied. Lie. He always knew who his savior was. He always knew who was in charge. That was David was never, never ever in doubt about that. And when his son took over Jerusalem, the city, what did David do? Did he fight back? He accepted the, the judgment, and I think that was a very big test for David. What do you think Saul would have done in that situation? He would have chopped him to pieces, and he had the military to do it. Uh, but David, when he gives praise to the Lord, it's different, because David gives it on two different, uh, from two different aspects. From when he was a shepherd up until he slew Goliath and then as God's ruler over his people. So he talks about it in, in, in two different theaters when he gives praise to the Lord. And in, 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 in 1 Chronicles 16, when he brings the ark back, he goes into great detail. However, the way I see it, we as a people have been given four great commissions in the Bible at four different times. You can pinpoint them, and there's more. However, these are four very bold and general decrees. At Noah's day, 120 years, and my spirit shall no longer be with man. What is that calling to? Judgment. At Elijah's day, choose ye this day whom you will serve. That was a commission. If you're going to serve God, then you need to get back to doing the gospel. In Christ's day, what commission was given? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. That's the third commission. Where's the fourth? Revelation 14 is the fourth and last commission. I find it interesting that you can, me, I can, this is my opinion. You're going to find this written down anywhere? No. Not that I know of. Four great commissions that were given to man that were given to God's people and the world. Because don't think for one minute that at Mount Carmel, the nations around were not watching what was going on. Why do you think it took three and a half years or three years of no, of no rain? Because all of Jezebel's people were now watching. They knew about Mount Carmel. They wanted to see if Baal was God. Basically, it was the third angel's message at Mount Carmel, was it not? Come out of her, my people. Touch not the unclean thing. You see? So you have these four great commissions. How many angels are there in Revelation? Four. What is the fourth one for? To give power to this group of people right here. That would be produced. And the only reason for 1844 was for one reason. 
And we're going to look at that today because I see it in 1 Chronicles 16. To spread the three angels' message, that's the only reason. No other reason. No sidetracks. Mrs. White says that for time and time and time again. She says that. The only reason we're here. And we're pulled this way and we're pulled that way and we have to do this ministry and that. No, 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 no. God will not hold them guiltless. And Mr. Ted Wilson, I'm just a lowly nothing, but I hope you hear what I'm about this, this Sabbath school because you need to go and get on your knees and ask for forgiveness for what you, where you're leading God's people. Take a look at David, Mr. Wilson. Take a look at David and reconsider your position because you're in very dangerous waters. And those waters are going to turn into flames. And it's called the lake of fire. And many will follow you there if you continue down the track. You change the great controversy. You tell me that I'm an alarmist because I'm preaching the three angels' messages, which is one of the great and last commissions of the Bible. And you're superseding that? You're in dangerous waters. And all that are following you there, we have a work to do. And when David gives praise here, and mind you, remind you, or keep in mind the setting that is put forth here. It is the bringing of the law of God back where? To God's people who were supposed to do what with it? Minister it. This is not just some party going on, you see. And, you know, in Matthew 5.17, where Jesus said, I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. That's a very interesting statement. The word he chose and fulfilled. Do you realize that word in and of itself does away with the Levitical priesthood and ushers in the Melchizedek priesthood officially, well, on earth. It always has been that way. And it also enforces the fact that the Ten Commandments are still in effect by the word, the Greek word, fulfill. Go into the Webster's Dictionary, not the new one, because, wow, what they did to that. But the 1828, and look at the six definitions to that word. It's interesting. Teach, advise, establish, carry out, and abolish is there. Do away with is there in the, in, the Greek, in the Greek. But what did Jesus do away with? What did he do away with? The Ten Commandments? Or the rule of law that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes were putting forth? Which one? Ted Wilson's law today that we don't have to do this work? That's the one. So you look at that word. I studied that word, and there's, it's amazing how much commentary there is on that one single word because everybody wants to twist it. And but when you go to that Webster's 1828, you get the exact meaning of what Jesus was saying right then and there, and you cannot twist it anyway. Cody. Well, just the, the, the short sentence that Jesus says right before mm -hmm. kind of explains that it Basically, if you if you say that he means abolish, then you, he said then he's saying, I have not come to destroy the law, but to destroy the law. Yeah, it's a that concept. doesn't make any yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. But he's saying right there, I have not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. So it's 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 the other meaning. It's not the yes. abolish. Oh, it's the actual meaning of the word. There needs to be a footnote for that word. And it's the same thing, Cody, if you will, as antichrist. How many people really know what that means? That word needed to be changed in place of, not against. You, how many people know, how many Seventh-day Adventists even know that? Rita? One of the meanings in Greek of fulfill is to make replete. Yes. Meaning completely filled or full. Yes. He's just, well, I don't I want to go there. Yes. No. Yes. To do. Yes, to carry out. And it's also an example of. To establish. to establish. Yes. See? 
And the Lord, in my mind, the Holy Spirit allowed it to be translated that way because knock and it shall be open unto you. Seek and you shall find. Because it's our obligation to understand exactly what that meant. Not be told, you see, to know what that meant. Does that make sense? Rita? Well, Isaiah 48 says, the word of our God shall stand forever. That yeah. backs it up. Yeah. And uh, Rodney, I want to read a bunch out of uh, Mrs. White's writings on the three angels' messages. It's so cl you, You'll know why they got them out of the church. It cannot mean to do away with because the Ten Commandments are God's character. And he says, I change not. And Malachi, what does he say? So you flip the page to Matthew and it changed? Let go. <laughs> All right, let's go. Now, Chronicles... I'm not going to read that, okay? I was going to, but i got to get to these other things. If you read down in Chronicles 6, uh, 116, it's God's judgments are in the land. Praise God. Be, uh, 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 his, his glory. And Do you know the word glory that David uses there? Do you know what it means? To be a fanatic. Literally, the word means there. It's insane what I read. And, and insane is part of the definition. To be a fanatic, give glory to God, for praise him for his judgments. It means become fanatical in our vernacular about your commitment to God. Now remember, they're bringing the ark back. And remember, his wife loathed him because he lowered himself to humble himself that way before God, before the ark. Yes, right. When you say become fanatic, my mind goes back to the four beasts in Revelation 5. And all they do day and night is say, holy, 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 That's Lord fanatical. God Almighty. I mean, this, this is, you know, the first time I read that, I, I, I thought, how boring. Their mind is overwhelmed. Yeah, but, yeah. but then, and then the, 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 I went back and looked at it again, and I said, praise the Lord. You know, that's what I want to come to. Yes, it's fanaticism yeah. by definition. That word glory that David uses there, and I'm simplifying. There's a big long, but it's, you read the word, and you're like, wow, this guy was nuts. Yeah, that's the point. What did Paul say? Become slaves to righteousness. Folks, that's fanaticism. So what are we are fanatics about today? Rock stars, sports stars. I heard, uh, I'm not going to say who, it doesn't matter. But a very controversial, radical uh, celebrity on the other side of celebrityism say, he's sick and tired of being told who we have to listen to, who we have to idolize, and who we have to fanatic, uh, become fanatics about in this country. Why can't people make up their own minds? Good point. Let's go to John 14, and I want to read, and of course, in light of what we just spoke about about Matthew 5, the word fulfill, if Jesus was saying to do away with his commandments, or, or, and especially the Sabbath, that's the one, what do you need the three angels' messages for? They're irrelevant, Mr. Wilson. They're irrelevant. What do you need them for? So by saying that we're not to do this, you're saying that the Sabbath no longer counts. Because what are the three angels' messages all about? One point. Keeping the Sabbath holy. What did we read in early writings? Who are the ones that the devil can't get in his camp? That sect of Sabbath keepers. Jesus says here, and we all know this very well, Matthew 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, which the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him. It's interesting. What does he mean, see him? Oh, remember, eyesight is a problem with the Laodiceans, right? Hmm. How many Seventh-day Adventists you know will not see Melchizedek? 
have physically see Melchizedek, physically say, no, the Holy Spirit can't do that. It had to be a man because they want the Levitical priesthood. The fulfillment of the law by Christ was not for them. Why do you want the Levitical priesthood over the Holy Spirit? Why? Do you have an ulterior motive? Do you have ambitions of being God yourself? Yes. Somewhere's along the line. That's what it boils down to. Why would you do away with the three angels' messages, Mr. Ted Wilson? Do you want to be God? Do you want people to worship at your feet? Be prepared. We're in some rough times. Rod. You were talking about the type and the intertype. Yep. And why would, why would you choose the the yeah? Why would you choose the 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 uh, anatomy, inferior? Uh, yeah, the inferior over over the real thing. Yeah. Well, Jesus said it. When your bridegroom is with you, you don't fast. <laughs> Why would you fast when you have the bridegroom? Now, look at the chain that Jesus set up here. He said, in whom the world cannot receive because he does not, he, he, uh, they do not see him. If you don't see the works of the Holy Spirit, how are you going to receive him? If you don't see Christ, how are you going to receive him? If you don't see God, how are you going to receive him? Cody? I was just going to say, it sounds like this is speaking into our times right now. Of course. Because um, I believe the Bible, I cannot think of whether it's the Apostle Paul or John or Peter, um, or Luke for that matter, um, wrote something to the to the ends of that the, the world does not know the Holy Spirit. And, and how true is that today? How much confusion do we have over that issue, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. which never used to be a problem before, but now all of a sudden... It's a huge. It's a huge problem in every different church, even churches of the same denomination, have completely opposite views of each other. Yep. It's it's amazing. Do so wanna... spiritually discerning, we don't discern yep. the Holy Spirit at all anymore. This is my opinion. Please make note of that. Do you want to know who I think the fourth angel is? That gives power to the saints. Do you want to know? How about the Holy Spirit? In the book of Revelations, Revelation, Jesus identifies himself as what? In regards to the uh, venue of Revelation. A messenger of his father. What does that make him? An angel. We're told that when the latter rain comes, it'll be poured out like never before. Who ministers that? In the upper room, who was it? At Christ's baptism, who let, came down on him to give him power? See, I think the fourth angel of Revelation is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to God-sealed people like never before on this earth. And let me tell you, the devil is shaking and quaking. He can't have that. So he gets people like Mr. Ted Wilson, all due respect to your position, to go out and say, don't do this. Does that fit, do you think? Will Seventh-day Adventists become our worst enemies if we remain faithful, given that scenario? What were they trying to stop Christ? Caiaphas, at least he was honest. We got to kill him so we don't lose our job. We can't have this latter rain poured out by heaven. What will they do? They'll lose their positions. So anybody who denies the Holy Spirit wants to be God themselves, in my opinion. Rodney. Um, the Spirit of Prophecy says that the angel of Revelation 18, which is the fourth angel, mm -hmm. is to a large degree the literature work. What mm -hmm. are we involved in right here? Mm -hmm. and, and who is it? Uh, who, who's, behind, who's the power that pushes it but the Holy Spirit. It's the only power that can. And our work is to get the the third angel's message out and that's what this ministry is all about. Yes. Here Jesus goes on to say you receive because you can't see him, you have to experience something 
first before you can receive it. If you're not seeing that, you can't. It's, it's, it's gibberish. And then he says, uh, neither know him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. And then Jesus gave the commission after this, go and do what? Go spread the three angels' messages. That's what he told them to do, no matter how you slice it. So now we go over here to chapter 15. Jesus reiterates. Verse 8 of 15, here in, in, in John. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you uh, uh, be my disciples. As the Father has loved you, so he so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Are they two different sets? He's telling them a commission for the future. You better hang on to Revelation 14. Does that make sense? Rita? Well, Mrs. White says, I have no specific time for which to speak when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will take place. When the mighty angel will come down from heaven and will unite with the third angel in closing up the work for this world. My message is, so she says that's what the Holy Spirit uh -huh. is going to do. Uh -huh. My message is that our only safety is in being ready for the heavenly refreshing, having our lamps trimmed and burning. That's what... The whole church should be praying, Lord, help us to be ready to receive your latter rain. Yes. Do you know how it aches my brain? That's your heart, folks. Forget the emotions. We're out of emotional time. It's got to be logic. And When I hear Seventh-day Adventists, 20, 30, 40, oh, I never heard that. What have you been doing? What? 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 It, I've been all my life. I was out of the church for a long time, but when I came back in, I wasn't playing. And I shortly thereafter got kicked out. Uh, sadly, okay? Sadly. That's not a good thing, that it should have to be that way. Listen to what Jesus said, and this blows my mind, because I hear people refer to, oh, yeah, you see, there's no commandments. Really? Let's analyze what Jesus said here. He says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even if I kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy may be full. If we don't keep God's commandments as Christians, we are sad folk. And then he goes on, one second, Cody, to say, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And then listen to what Jesus says. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Wait a minute. If the commandments were done away with, what was Jesus dying for? And if he's telling them in the future, this may cost you your life. How does that wash? See the problem? The whole reason that Jesus came to fulfill the law was to pay the price of the law so that they could go out and do what? The same for others. But the law was done away. It's, it's so ridiculous. Cody? You know, you connect that verse uh, with Romans 13, mm -hmm. and he talks about, I'll just sum it up for you, but it's, no, in, that's fine. it's, in, it's in verses 8 through 10, and it, it talks about loving one another. And then it says, for the commandment says, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. And the commandments are summed up in this, in this phrase, essentially, that you loveth your neighbor as yourself. Yep. So that's it. That when Jesus says that you love one another, he means keep the Ten Commandments. And go to the point of giving your life that somebody else may have that knowledge. And, and the psalm, the very first part that you said, the person who is happy... It just mm -hmm. said the person who is happy keeps mm -hmm. his commandments. Mm -hmm. The Psalms say that about the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. See, David, when he's talking about praise and joy and glory, it's not so much, it's a corporate level. Now, let me tell you something. Last week, there was almost a tragedy in this church. And these are the things that show me. I, I don't need, the, the prayers that were answered this week for several people in here have been pretty amazing. But I, was washing the spaghetti pot, which 
Yes, I was washing a pot on Sabbath. And the handle fell off it, just casually. Do you know what I was doing with that pot a short time before? I took it off a stove with boiling water in it and carried it to the sink. What do you suppose would have happened if the handle would have fallen off then? I would have been in a hospital, folks. I would have all gone down in front of my pants. And the Lord, not only like Jim said, he let it fall off at that particular time for a reason. I didn't use that pot again. I threw it in the garbage. That's a dangerous weapon. A, 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 a water boiling pot with a bad handle. Would you agree? This is how the Lord works. Not in the mighty great things I can't control, but in the little simple things. You see, Cody? I wonder if when you were holding that pot, if there was an angel just I know ho there holding, was. A, holding the bottom of it. He had on an oven it. mitt, didn't he? And then he, when, when you got it to the sink and got it cleaned out a bit, he let it go. And I mean, I'm telling you, when I picked it up, it went bloop. Yeah. It was all corroded. The rivets are shot. And I'm sure the other side is the same. Praise the Lord. But he lets it happen in his time for my enrichment. And then I got, and then he says, now what are you going to do? You see? Joy, Jesus says, I leave you peace, not as the world leaves. What is worldly peace? Prosperity. Money, houses, cars, good times, dancing, carrying on. But peace I leave you, that you have joy with my Father. And I'm paraphrasing. What's the common denominator? What's the conduit for that peace and joy? Keeping the commandments. So how could they be done away with? Then by definition, well, no, by precept, if you say the law was done away with, then there's no peace, no joy. According to whom? Ted Wilson or Jesus Christ? Now, who are you going to believe? I own a company. The buck stops with me. Whatever my people do, guess who's responsible? If I don't get paid for a job because somebody screwed it up, who's responsible, them or me? That's the way it works. I want to read out of uh, uh, Christ Triumphant, page 370. No, wait a minute. Oh, no. Page 350. Good thing I noticed that. Well, I would have noticed it right away. It says, our work is to proclaim the three angels' messages. Hmm. Who's that quoting, I wonder? Well, you're going to find out here in a minute. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins, Isaiah 58.1. The last great conflict will short uh, the last great conflict will be short and terrible. After stating that, can anybody tell me what happened in the political world this week that signals the close of probation? Can anybody tell me? Something happened in the political world that's extremely significant. It was paybacks. Rodney, the microphone. Trump pronouncing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Do you know that for t over 20 years they've been trying? Who's been trying to get that done? One group of people, evangelicals. Who were the biggest? He proclaimed Jerusalem the capital of Israel. It's been Tel Aviv before. Not Jerusalem. This is a big deal. Why did Donald Trump do that? Can anybody tell me? There's a reason he did that. Rod, uh, 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 Cody? Because the Pope wants to rule from Jerusalem. But who backed him big time? The evangelicals. Who are the biggest ones claiming that Israel will be reinstated as God's people? There's paybacks. No, they wouldn't want any money. They couldn't buy him. But that's interesting. Cody. It, it has to happen for the evangelicals uh, yes. because it's part of their pushing of the futurism antichrist yes. uh, that they have. And, it, yes. and it, all of it involves the reinstatement of Israel and all that stuff. Now, when was the last time you heard the word Al-Qaeda? It's been a while, right? Who has it been? ISIS. Guess what? Al-Qaeda immediately made a proclamation and declared war in the United States. 
What is this ushering in, folks? Cody just told you. The Pope wants to rule from Jerusalem, but who else will walk in that city? Satan and Cody. And it's setting up, before that, it's setting up for World War III. Yep, but that's exactly, yes. that's what Albert Pike wrote about, how it would yes. be set up, would be between the yes. Zionists and the Middle Eastern uh, Islam countries. We need to do, can really consider what and who we are individually. This is a major, major thing, folks. Mrs. White says that since 1844, we've been off any prophetic map. That's a fact. However, we will know the events when they happen. That is a natural fact. Let me re finish reading this. This is a big deal, folks, that this happened. It says, oh, and by the way, that also answers the question of why they're going to dump so much money into this country. Why do you suppose? What, what would that answer? Because they care about us or they want their war machine up and running? The military is in total decline. It's a mess. Make no doubt about it. Enlistment is way down. The equipment is antiquated and garbage compared to what it should be. So why do you think they're going to dump all this money into this country? Why do you think they want the patriotism up? Do you see the picture? Is it hard to see, knowing the great controversy? Knowing early writings, is it hard to see? Mr. Ted Wilson, you better read that book again. Because you're walking it right into the lake of fire. It says here, old controversies will be revived. Remember I read last week that William Miller was lambasted by all the religious authorities in his day, calling him what? An alarmist. A liar. Well, that's what we're being called right now, by our own people. Old controversies will be revived. The devil knows what's going on. The devil knows that if the Holy Spirit is involved, God's people cannot be duped. The devil knows that by keeping God's law, specifically the Sabbath, the way Jesus kept the Sabbath, that those people can't be fooled. But we don't know that, you see. He says here, the last... Or she says, new, uh, new controversies will arise, old ones and new ones. Oh, yes. The last warning must be given to the world. There is a special power in the presentation. Welcome, folks. Presenta that's not in here. Presentation of the truth at the present time. Interesting. There is a special power in the presentation of the truth at a special time. What power is she talking about? The fourth angel, maybe? You can't see the Holy Spirit if you don't experience him. But how long will it continue? Only a little while. If ever there was a crisis, it is now. She didn't say then, did she? Did she say then? Or you might argue, well, she wrote it then. No, she didn't. It was written after then. Because she didn't know what she was writing then, did she? It wasn't all right. It's now. This is timeless. So... Folks, Philadelphia was produced to do this work, basically to battle Laodicea. Isn't it interesting? I'm excited. I don't know about you. This is a time, though, of cleansing, a time of getting the world out. She says, decided efforts should be made to bring the message for this time prominently before the people. I'm an alarmist. Do you see why the great controversy had to be replaced? Rodney? We need to be fanatic and we need to be alarmist. Absolutely. Give glory, as David said, meant become a fanatic about God. Exactly. Amen. That's Amen. what he meant. That's and what we need, means. we need to agitate. Yes. Yes. It's our job. Yes, as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Let God administer judgment. We have to administer the warning, but we better make sure we're right here first. Here, 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 here. That that crown, that helmet is sitting here. And holiness to the Lord is here. And God's law is here. And God's Holy Spirit is here motivating. 
A pot of water to you may not be a big thing, but it was to me. That's something I'm never going to forget. Now listen. Now keep in mind here, folks, Philadelphia was in the third angel's message. The fourth angel isn't out yet, is he? So you got to roll these two together. She says, the third angel is to go forth with great power. Let none ignore this work or treat it of little importance. And that's a futuristic statement because, you see, this was up to the second angel's message, was it not? When did the third angel's message come into play? At William Miller's time, the loud cry. It went forth, come out of her, my people. Yes, it was a great disappointment, but I said it was also the greatest time for God's people because it's preparing the people that will be so full of the Holy Spirit, nothing can stop them. Nothing. We're taught as Adventists to be afraid of that time, are we not? And I always thought as a kid, and I said this a hundred times, how did Moses and Aaron walk out in those storms? I don't get it. Would you? You've been in hurricanes here in Florida, haven't you? Some of you have been in hurricanic, if you will, cyclonic snowstorms, which are called blizzards, which is the same thing as a hurricane, only zero temperature. They're scary. I used to have to plow snow in those things. I've seen mighty trucks destroyed by a snowflake, you see? But I'm saying, with great power, the fourth angel, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. She says, decided efforts should be made to bring this message for this time prominently before the people. The third angel is to go forth with great power. Let none ignore this work or treat it of little importance. Who is she talking to? The Pope? Who is the nun here? That's N, not N-U-N. Who is the nun here? The Seventh-day Adventist people. The people that went from here forward. Do we have any times past this? Are there any dates given past this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. She says... The truth is to be proclaimed to the world that they might see the light. Greater love has no man than to give his life for someone else. Okay, there's another application to that. How about give up a great career here on earth to follow Christ? Can you think of anybody in the Bible who did that? Uh, Paul. Uh, Peter. He wasn't living so bad. Moses. And on and on and on. Yes, dear. Rita. I'll tell you how Moses and Aaron went through those those uh, Storm. plague, those storms. The plagues. Yes. yes. Mrs. White says, as members of the body of Christ approach the period of their last conflict, the time of Jacob's trouble, they will grow up into Christ and will partake largely of his spirit. As the third angel swells to a loud cry, and as the power and glory attend the closing work, the faithful people of God will partake of that glory. It is the latter rain which revives and strengthens them to pass through the time of trouble. Their faces will shine with the glory of that light which attends the third Amen. angel. And you know what? This is a supernatural event because in of ourselves, do we have the strength to do this? Did Jesus have the strength to go to Calvary on his own? Who came and strengthened him? A mighty angel from heaven. Not my will, but thy will be done. He, right there, Jesus lost his life. No, back up. When he accepted to be Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he lost his life. Did he not? I don't know how many eons ago that was. I have no idea. And as I said, I suspect it was before Cody, he created Lucifer, because they always have the solution before the problem. He could not be the Alpha and the Omega. Then you're making it up as you go along. Cody, and then Rodney. I was going to say, you talk about giving up a career. Jesus Christ. I mean, how much more of a, a temptation is it for him to just say, no, you know, let them perish, he could have, too. Because of the gap is so far different. Yeah. He's the yeah. king of the universe. Yep. 
the creator. Yep. And he came all the way down here and took upon our flesh. And he, he, ta he keeps that forever. He keeps yep. that flesh yep. forever. He yep. might have a glorified body, but he still has the scars. Yeah, he's not omnipresent he's anymore. On, he's not omnipresent. He's yep. given up so much. We have no idea what he's and, given up. And we can't give up, you know, having a Mercedes or something. And what we can't is give that? that? Nothing. It's not even nothing. It's ridiculous. I'd rather be able to fly through the universe than fly down I-4. Well, you can't fly down I-4. That's an oxymoron. Anyhow, go ahead, Rodney. When, when we first dedicate our lives to the Lord, we give up our life. Amen. Our old life. We do, we, do, we do, in essence, the same thing as Jesus did when he accepted to, be, to come here to earth and be born in Bethlehem. Yes. We proclaim we do that. Then we have to live it. Well, we, if we really do it, if yes. we're for real, we yes. do. Yes. And uh, we, we have to walk away from the world. I mean, when I was well, 46 years ago, I was vice president of a, of a home improvement company. I walked out of that and became a call porter. And if I had to do it over again, I'd do it. Well, that's what got you here. Listen to this next sentence. This is our work. Not the health ministry. Not soap kitchens. Not this event, that event, hospitals. This is our work. This is coming from a woman who went through a great disappointment and learned it the hard way. A prophet. This is our work. This statement was inspired by whom? The Holy Spirit. The light that we have upon the third angel's message is the true light. The mark of the beast is exactly what it has been proclaimed to be, Mr. Ted Wilson. All in regard to this matter is not yet understood and will not be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. That's why there's no more time prophecies, because now, if you don't see, as Jesus said, the Holy Spirit, you're not going to know him, and you'll not be led by him. Who will be leading you at that point? The devil. Through whom? A Pharisee. Cody? It's funny you mention that. I've been reading uh, Councils on Diet and Foods, and she, she said that all of our institutions are to be done, and I'm paraphrasing you know, what she said mm -hmm. here. It's in the third and fourth chapter, uh, that all of our institutions, whether it's health ministries or whether it's schools or whatever, they're to be done in the context of preaching the three angels' messages. So that's mm -hmm. the most important mm -hmm. thing. And if that's yes. not... But do, yes. in today's world, do we see that taking place? We see it reversed, don't we? Yes, it's the exact opposite. I yes. went through a detox program when I was in California at, in the Marines, and, they, and it was Loma Linda. And they didn't, they didn't teach me anything about God, anything about the message. I didn't even know they were Seventh-day Adventists. Seventh Adventist. I didn't know they were Seventh-day Adventists then. No, and you won't if you go there. Listen to this. Well, let me finish this out. It says, there's a lot here, and I didn't even get to 6T yet. It says, but a most solemn work is to be accomplished in our world. In other words, you may not understand at the time what you're doing, but you have a commission. Go do it. And as a soldier, how often does that happen? Many times I never knew where I was going. I was given, you move your platoon over here by such and such a time, and they gave me a map that was 30 years old. Roads were missing, roads were, I had to get them there. I didn't know why or where, what I was walking into. I had a work to do. It didn't matter. The map was useless, pretty much. But we have a map, you see. And we have a commander, you, you need to do this. Why? I don't know. Me, personally. But he does. It says, the Lord's command is to his servants is cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. And you know what? Folks might say, well, who are you to say anything to Ted Wilson? Who are you? You know what? I'm nobody. I don't even care if people know my name. It's irrelevant. But they need to know that and who the minister of that is. Who is it? It's the Holy Spirit. 
What is Jesus doing right now as I'm talking? What is it? He? He's standing before the Father, hearing the prayers, presenting them, saying, yea or nay, to your my name. You see? What is the Holy Spirit doing? I hope he's here now. Making us fanatics to do this work. As David says, give glory to God. That word means fanatic that he uses. And David was fanatical about God. There's no doubt about it. He was a nut. That was one of the most colorful people in history, if you will. It says here, cry and, and their sins. We are Laodiceans. There is to be no change in the features of our work. Why did we write a new great controversy, so-called? Hmm. Why did we throw early writings out? Interesting. Let alone the fifth volume of the testimony. Did you ever read that? It scolds Adventists. Seventh-day Adventists. It is to stand as clear and distinct as prophecy has made it. We are to enter into, the conf into no confederacy with the world, Mr. Ted Wilson. Support that by so doing we accomplish more. Supposing that by so doing we accomplish more. Let me read that. I, I busted that up. We are to enter into no confederacy with the world. Supposing that by so doing we accomplish more. Remember what Jezebel meant. False teacher. Ecumenism. That's what the word Jezebel meant. Not ecumenism, but false teacher. And Ahab went and got her to teach ecumenism. Hello. How you doing? To teach ecumenism to Israel. He's the one that made the word Jezebel, or the name, meaning false teacher. If any stand in the way to hinder their advantage, uh, advancement of the work in the lines that God has appointed, they will displease God. We're alarmists. Is Mr. Ted Wilson pleasing God by that statement? Is the great hope pleasing God? No line of our faith that has made us what we are is to be weakened. We have the old landmarks of truth, experience, and duty. We are to stand firmly in defense of our principles in full view of the world. Okay, she's in perfect harmony with 1 Chronicles 16. Give glory to God. You're to be fanatical about this before the world. How many of us give, lose your life? You see? That's not a good thing in our society. It is essential that workers be raised up to open the living oracles of God to all nations, tongues, and people. People of all ranks and capacities with vigor or various gifts are to stand in their God-given armor to cooperate harmoniously for a common result. There's only one leader I'm reading here, and that's the Holy Spirit. They are to unite in the work of bringing the truth to all nations and peoples, each worker fulfilling his or her own special appointment. There is a wide field of action, and in their plan and devisings, all need to consider the result. Everything is to move according to the divine plan. Who is in charge? God. The whole body must be fitly joined together. I love those people. Oh, you're not in a conference. You don't have a head. Really? No, I don't think so. It doesn't mean whether you're in or out. It's how you're going about being a Christian. It says, everything is to move according to the divine plan. The whole body must be fitly joined together that each member may promote the designs of him, capital letter, who gave his life, capital letter, for the life of the world. So no greater gift is there than one man can give his life for another. What's our commission? Four great commissions were given in the Bible. We're in the last one. From Genesis to Revelation, you will find four great commissions given to God's people. 
We're in the last one. We're in the sunset of the last one. Jerusalem has just been proclaimed the capital of Israel. This is the beginning of the end events. Mr. Trump just paid back the evangelicals. The military might of this nation is, as we speak, being built up to enforce this. What should we be doing, folks? How much more does God have to do to get us out of this Laodicean condition? Philadelphia versus Laodicea. Everything that culminated through the other five churches, every bad thing is in Laodicea. But Philadelphia, every good thing that is in Christ is in Philadelphia. The character. The 12 stones is Philadelphia. And our job, first, what does it say in the book of Ezekiel? First, the house of God will be judged, and then it goes out to the world. Well, that's being done right now. We have a commission. Now, like I said, I didn't even read the statements, uh, uh, 6T, page 17. If you don't get it from that, you ain't ever going to get it. If I don't, I don't know about you. I can't say for you, because that's not my job. But I can say for our leaders that they're in deep and great apostasy. And if they don't wake up, they're going to be washed away, like they've never seen. But this is a mighty time for God's people, but it's an individual time to be brought into a corporate swell through the power of the Holy Spirit, the true priests on earth. We owe no man anything other than our lives, <laughs> for Christ's sake. The law was done away with. Are you serious? Really? And it's only one, that fourth commandment. That pesky fourth commandment. Well, I, for one, want to do all I can with the remaining time, whether I die first or the Lord returns. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me because, like Paul said, for me to die is gain. But to live is to serve the Lord. Let's pray. We're out of time. Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord, and we ask, Father, that your people awaken. Lord, you have done everything you can, and then some, Father, to get our attention. But each and every one, we must go to the mirror and see the cracks and flaws that displease you and eliminate them, Lord, and allow your spirit to fill them up and, and give us the armor, Father, that we can go forth and be about your business. At 12 years old, your son realized that here on this planet. Father, please be with us that we can do this work. Forgive your people, and may they awaken out of this slumber and become an army mighty with banners, Lord, and go forth and give our lives for those who are perishing. We praise you. We ask your blessings. We praise you for this place to be able to do this work. But, Lord, we ask somehow that we can expand it. Please be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.